copyrighted program transcribed and dedicated to the prevention of crime. Calling all guards, attention all guards, broadcast number 198, regarding a holdup at 5th and Market Street at 8.30 a.m. this date. No description of holdup man available. The only money which can be identified is a $100 bill. That is all. That's all. Enforcement authorities are often criticized for the long lapse of time which follows the commission of a crime and the arrest of the criminal. In many cases, this is due to the inability of the victim to furnish the officers with a description of the criminal. It is surprising how few people can give an accurate description of their friends, let alone a description of a person whom they meet momentarily under conditions of stress. It is only the persistent efforts of the police under trying circumstances which result in the punishment of the malefactors. In the case we're about to hear, the police arrested the criminal in 18 days after the commission of the crime. Under the circumstances, a record arrest. And now, the play, Tobaccoville Road. near the harbor district of Long Beach, a group of men from the fleet are enjoying their first meal ashore. At a table near a window that looks out across the water, a man and a woman sit talking. Do you have to go tomorrow? Uh, yes, I've got to call in. I've been trying to get him to send me to the base hospital for three months now. Ship's doctor says it's the only place for Oh, I wish you didn't have to go. Oh, it won't be long. Pretty soon I'll be as well as I ever was. Then we'll do the things we always do. <laughs> oh. oh, I wish we could do something about that cough, darling. It seems to tear you up so. No, I'll be all right. You wait and see. Oh, oh say, I, I forgot to give you this. I got it for you in Honolulu. What is it? <laughs> Look, you unscrew this little gadget here. Like this. There you are. It's a marble. No, it's a piece of agate I picked up on a little coral island down close to Tahiti. The natives believe that it's a magic stone. Anyone who wears one always has good luck. Do you believe in it? Well, I don't know. I had that a long time. I had it when I met you. When I found that necklace in Honolulu, I, I put it in there and brought it home to you. <laughs> don't talk, darling. It upsets you, sir. No. Don't you worry about me. It'll work out. Oh, and before I forget it, here's the money for your trip back home. Don't you think I should stay with you? Well, you can't very well stay at the hospital with me, honey. Wouldn't help any you to be down here. I wish you could see the baby again before you go. So do I. 
I guess I won't be able to. We take it care. You know I will. If anything happens to me, there's, there's enough insurance. Oh, don't talk that way, Fred. Nothing's going to happen to you. You'll get well, and in three months you'll be out of the Navy, and we'll get that little place you've always wanted, and we'll settle down, and you could get a job, and everything will be swell. <laughs> Wish I could feel that sure about things. Oh, you will. You, you wait till you get up to San Francisco and get all settled, and you'll be all right in no time at all. Hello, Colleen. Gee, I haven't seen you in the coons How you been? Yeah. My, but it's good to see you again. Why, it's like old times. <laughs> You're looking all right. Oh, I am all right. Oh, uh, may I present a friend of mine, Marcel James. Miss Colleen. Mrs. Huh? Uh, Mrs. Banoff. Uh, this is my husband. Uh, how do you do? How Pleased do you do? to meet you. Well, Ralph's an old friend of mine. You've heard me speak of Ralph Holmes. Well, uh, oh, sure. I feel like I know you already. <laughs> How long has this been going on? Oh, the marriage? Yeah. Oh, four years at least, hasn't it, Fred? <laughs> four years and three months. Uh-huh. I uh, see you're in the service. Yeah, I'm a musician on the Utah. Is that so? I used to be at Norfolk. Well, that's where I met my wife. She comes from Tobaccoville, North Carolina. Why, I know lots of people in Tobaccoville. You do? Well, we'll have to compare notes. Yeah, Colleen has an uncle in Norfolk. I'm going back there in a couple of months. Give me his address. I'll look him up. Well, this seems to be a night of coincidences. I'm leaving next week for a visit in the east. Oh, maybe we can get together sometime. Maybe. Are you going east too, uh, Mr. Bano? Oh, no, no, I'm I'm staying on the coast. Oh, well, that's too bad. During the week that followed, James was almost constantly with Colleen. And one night as they sat on the beach, watching the water terrace the sand, was Colleen's why. Why must you keep on with something that's... You don't believe in yourself. Fred thinks I love him. It would kill him if he found out I didn't. Well, what difference do a few months make? What do you mean? What's the difference of a few days one way or another? He'll be gone in a few months anyway. Oh, Jim. How can you say such things? Well, it's true, isn't it? Maybe. But that doesn't make things any different. Well, if I met you before, before I knew Fred, well... Perhaps things would be different, but it's too late now. It's never too late. Oh, I'm not thinking about myself. I don't matter so much. But I'm all Fred has left to keep him going. Well, he's got the boy. You don't think I'd go and leave him, do you? Why not? Well, women aren't given to thinking that way, Jim. Well, maybe I'm not. I don't see the point in two people going on without each other when they're as much in love as we are. I wonder if we are so much in love. I don't know about you, but I know how I feel. Are you sure you do? Of course I do. I'm not so sure. All right, look. Let's forget the whole thing. I've been trying to get you to see things my way for a week now, and I haven't gotten anywhere. Maybe I'm no good at this sort of thing anyway. I love you, and that's that. I thought you loved me, and that's that. So let's forget all about it till you're ready to make a definite break. Will you do that, Jim? Just forget all about it till I can see my way out of things. It's a deal. And now, let's settle something else. You're going back east, so am I. I have some money due me in San Diego. Let's take the boy and go down there. I'll collect the money, buy a car, and we'll drive east. How about it? You agree to forget all about the other? At least for a while? That's right. I'll forget all about it. It's a deal. Here's a hotel that Ralph said would be pretty good. Uh, does Ralph live down here in San Diego? Yeah, he runs the filling station out of town. Oh, we'll have to look him up. Should we ring the bell? I might as well. Seems to be a slack season. <laughs> Pleasant fellow, isn't he? <laughs> uh, you have rooms? Certainly. Oh, we'd like one... Uh, two. Two. I'll make up your mind. Two rooms with baths. Two baths, too, huh? By all means. Got any baggage? Much too much. Well, we ain't got room for that much. Oh, we'll manage. Now, if you'll just let us register. Go ahead, help yourself. Uh, shall I register for you, too, Colleen? Ain't you two married? Why, yes, why? Oh, Jim. It's all right. 
Hey, what the idea, young fella? Never mind. We still want two rooms together. All right, but it's a darn lot of trouble if you ask me. Nobody asked you. Come on, Tommy. Why don't you have to tell me your name? It might save a lot of bother later. What do you mean? Nothing in particular. Only some of these small hotel clerks are too nosy. Might complicate matters if you started asking questions. Here you are. Jim, you haven't anything to hide. I mean, you're not afraid of anything, are you? Of course not. Why? Oh, I just wondered. You don't be so strange lately since we got to town. Well, nothing's wrong. I never done anything to be afraid about. Well, I gave a hot check down once, but that's all. Are you sure that's all? Positive. I'll prove it to you. Tomorrow, when I collect my money, I'll pick up that hot check and show it to you. Oh, I believe you, all right. I guess I'm just a little tired. I just got worried a little. Now, you stop worrying. You take a nap while I look up Ralph and get some matter settled. Then we'll go out and pick out that car I'm going to buy. All right. I'll see you later. Here's the place Ralph told me about. He said we could get delivery quicker here than anywhere else. I don't like this kind of a car, though. Well, I've tried them all, and this is the only agency that can get us a car by tomorrow. I guess that's that, then. We might as well go in. Oh, good afternoon. Could I help you? Yeah. We're looking for a car. A sedan, preferably. Well, uh, now, now, here's a nice car. Uh, this particular model is all we have in stock right now. Uh, however, next week, I think... Uh, no, uh, we want the car not later than noon tomorrow. Well, in that case, I'd advise you to take this car. We can service it and have it ready for you the first thing in the morning. What do you think, darling? What? Oh, oh, I think it's all right. I would like a four-door better, but this will be all right. Well, I think you'll find this very comfortable. Yeah, that's fine. We want to start back east tomorrow, and we wouldn't want anything to happen. Well, in that case, I suppose you wish to make some arrangements for taking the car out of the state, the finance company. No, uh, we'll pay cash when we get the car. Oh, well, in that case, we'll have all the papers made out tonight before the girl goes home, just in case you come before she gets down in the morning. Now, uh, what name shall I register? Uh, Just uh, register the car in my wife's name, Colleen Woodruff. All right, Mr. Woodruff. At 8.30 next morning, the assistant cashier of a branch bank at 5th and Market Street started to unlock the front door of the bank. He felt something pressing into the small of his back. Just thank you, though. Nothing was wrong. Unlock the door and go inside. Hmm? Oh, 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 it's a new kind of a sticker, I think. That's right, son. Just that natural and you won't get hurt. Hmm, well, that makes sense. Won't you come in? After you. And while we're on the subject, don't turn around. Would you mind not pushing so hard with that gun? Assuming it is a gun. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, that's better. Thank you. Here. Take this knife and cut the cord off that Venetian blind. Just like a detective's doing, huh? The bandit ties up cashier. I resent the term bandit. I'm merely opening an account. You better open it quicker. Our Mr. Long will be coming in that door, and it might make him very angry to find you here, keeping me from getting the bank open. We'll save a piece of cord for Mr. Long. Now, if you'd be so kind as to go back into those little booths back there. Those are reserved for customers. They clip coupons in them. I'm sorry, but they'll have to serve our needs. I think number one of it for you. Now, if you'll permit me, I'll tie your hands behind you like this. Too tight? Yeah. Uh, quite all right. Uh, don't mind me. Now, if you'll be seated, I'll go up in front and wait for Mr. Long. And don't try to get humorous when he comes in. Now, Mr. Long, just keep turned around. Walk straight back to the coupon booth. Huh? How did you get in here? I came in with your assistant cashier. He's already resting. You can't get away with this. You were, Mr. Long. I have gotten away with it. I'm practically finished. Will you go ahead? Sir. I think it would be better to put you in booth number two. I don't want to disturb Mr. Uh... By the way, what is your name? Walworth. Mr. Walworth has been very nice to me. Now, if I may have your keys, Mr. Long. Sir. Thank you. Now, you'd better get Mr. Walworth's keys and come with me. I'll need you to open the vault. Uh, how do you expect to get around the burglar alarm? I've already taken care of that. We aren't going to open the main vault. I'll just let you take what you have in your cage truck. Well, that won't be much. That'll be enough. Okay, here we are. Now, let's get going. Put the money on top and open the other other drawers. Now, if you will just return to the booth. But don't turn around. All right, gentlemen. I'll be seeing you. Don't try any funny stuff. I'm very nervous when I have a gun in my hand. Oh, 
Sergeant Peters speaking. Where? When? All right, we'll be right down. Come on, boys, hold up at Fifth and Market. Get going. Okay. Five minutes ago, Sergeant. Which way did he go? Well, I haven't the slightest idea. He just walked out and left us in the booth back there. And you didn't even see which way he went. Well, I was afraid to stick my head out. Who do you expect to take a shot at you? Uh, well, Never I... mind. What did he look like? Well, I don't know. What? Well, he told me not to turn around, and I didn't. Mr. Walwick, how about you? Did you see him? <laughs> do I look like a fool? No, we won't go into personalities. Why didn't you see him? Because he impressed me with the importance of not looking at him. Uh, pardon me, senor. I think maybe I have some information for you. All right, spill it. What is it? I see man coming from back just before 9 o'clock. I also see which way he go. Which way was it? He took a taxi cab right here at the corner, but first he walked down Market Street. I get it. Walked around the block. What did he do then? He get in taxi with package in his hands, wrapped up in newspaper. Then he drive away. What kind of a cab was it? Kind of gray color it was, I think. Yes, that was it. Okay, thanks. Hey, Wes, let's check the cab company. Picking up on a cab that's supposed to have hauled a bank robber away from Fifth and Market. Got anybody who made a haul from there? No, no direct call. Al Ogle was supposed to be around that neighborhood. Maybe he got a fare there. He just come back. Hey, uh, Al, come here. What's up, boss? Hiya, Petey. Say, Al, did you pick up a fare at Fifth and Market about 30 minutes ago? Yeah, how'd you know? He just held up the bank on that corner. No. Gee, he must have had the money in that paper package when he got in the cab. Did he take it with him? I don't know. I think he left the paper in the cab. Let's look. Yep, there she is. We'll take this in and see if we can find any prints on it. Where did you take this bird? To a department store. Did you leave him there? No, I took him down to one of the auto agencies. Come on, get in. We're going down there. came here in a cab. Oh, you must meet Mr. Woodruff. Well, he just drove away a few minutes ago. Did he buy a car? Yes, sir. Paid cash, too. Uh, let's see the money. Why, sure. Right in the office here. What's wrong? My hunch is right. This bird just held up a bank. Oh, it couldn't be Mr. Woodruff. Why, he was in here yesterday and told me he'd be back today and pay cash for the car. He and his wife were going... I'll bet he did at that. Let's see that money. Well, here it is. Uh-huh. I thought so. Two fifty-dollar bills and one hundred and a lot of twenties. That fits the description of the money taken from the bank. Got this bird's address? No, but I heard him tell the taxi driver to take a package to the Silver Star Hotel. You did. Thanks, Mr. Rogers. We'll see you later. Stay in the car, Al. Wes, let you and I go in and see if this bird's still there. You bet, sir. Now, what is it? First time people have to check out in a hurry, and now that blasted bell's ringing again. What's that about somebody checking out? What's it to you? We're police officers. Don't get funny. Answer my question. Uh, that man and that woman with a little boy came in here yesterday and checked out all in a hurry just a little while ago. Yeah? Where'd they go? How do I know? What'd this man look like? Uh, he's about as old as I am. Maybe a little bigger. He was dark and slender. Did you hear him mention anybody else while he was here? Yeah, I heard him and the woman talking about some guy named Ralph. He runs a filling station somewhere south of town. You get a lot of information, don't you? I keep my ears open and my mouth shut. Yeah, I've noticed that. Well, if this monkey comes back, call us, will you? Maybe. Uh, 
Say, Al, do you know anybody working in a filling station who goes by the name of Ralph? Oh, let's see now. Nope, that's another fella. Say, there's a mechanic who used to work over close to that hotel who runs a filling station way out of the south side of town. He's Ralph, uh, Ralph... Ralph Holmes, I think. Yeah, that's it. Hold your heads, boys. We're up. Yeah, maybe. We're looking for a fellow about your height and age. Just got in town yesterday with a woman and a little boy. Stopped at the Silver Star. Know who he might be? Yeah, let's see now. Where'd he come from? According to the hotel register, they came from Long Beach. Nope. I don't know who it could be. Only fellow I know in Long Beach is Marcel James. And a married woman, a Mrs. Fanow. Is this guy James a slender, dark fellow, about 40 years old? Yeah, yeah, that fits him all right. But he wouldn't come down here. Why not? Well, he's got a bad check charge against him. Anyway, Mrs. Banner's gone back east to Tobaccoville, North Carolina, I think. Thanks, pal. That's all I want to know. Okay. Well, let's get back to headquarters. <laughs> That's about all you can do, I guess. We've kept you off the job long enough. Don't mind me. I love it. Come on, Wes. Let's check that hot paper report. Okay. Ought to be in here if we've got it. Hey, I remember that check case. He gave a bum check to a hotel man about a year ago. James, that's the monkey. We even got a picture of him. He left it in his room. You're yeah, right. Here's the dope right here. Marcel James. So he's heading east, eh? And she's going to Tobaccoville, North Carolina. My, my, what a nice reception they're going to get. Arriving at the border of California, Marcel James, by the simple process of leaving his place in the line of cars awaiting inspection, drove through the quarantine lines and on into Arizona. Police teletype and broadcast carried appeals to cities along the route possible to the bandits. On Arizona, watch for car bearing California license 5Z6359. Occupants of car, man and woman. Man named Marcel James, woman Mrs. Banow. Wanted by San Diego police, robbery and larceny. James is slender, about 40 and dark. Albuquerque police calling all cars. Attention all cars. Arrest man and woman occupants of car heading east. California license 5Z6359. Three, five, nine. Man is about four. In San Diego Police Department, car and occupant you inquired for passed through here. Identification established at state line. Too late to make arrest. And teletyping ahead. Again and again, the discouraging reports come back that the hunted car and its occupants had barely escaped the police. One fact was certain. Mrs. Banow was headed for Tobaccoville. And the additional information had been obtained that James had relatives in Norfolk, Virginia. These two points thus became the centers of police attention. Uh, hello, Bill. Seen any suspicious cars today? Hey, <laughs> a Norfolk uh, police department on the job, eh? Yeah, we <laughs> always keep looking for them. Yeah. We've got a description from the California boys down in San Diego. Looking for a Chevy coach with a man and a woman and a little boy in it. They're on their way to Tobaccoville. Hey, what's your number? 5Z6359. And you got the motor number? Yeah, M4763175. And, all right, we'll keep a lookout for it. Now call me up if you hear anything or see it. Okay. Say, hey, Joe, here's a new license number, what we're to look out for. Okay, put her on the hook. Yeah. I'll get it later. All right. Yes, sir. 
something I could do for you? Yeah. Can you tell me whether there's a good hotel? For the three of you? Yeah. My wife and little boy. The stranger's here. Going on to the tobacco bill tomorrow. I see. Uh-huh. Well, yes, yes. A pretty good little family hotel right across the street there. Eh? Oh, thanks. We'll go over and take a look at it. All right. I'll service the car, will you? Who I'll bet be you? Over to the yes, sir. Hey, what, what the... 5Z6359. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, uh, operator. Operator, get me the police station. Quick. <laughs> Bank robbery. In just a moment, you will hear the summation of our story. Never the purpose of the police to cause innocent people undue suffering. For this reason, Mrs. Bannow, who was unaware of the criminal activities of a companion, escaped punishment. James, however, was sentenced to the federal penitentiary, and most of the money, as well as the automobile, were recovered. No, crime does not pay. <laughs> Broadcast number 198. Suspect now in custody. That is all. Gordon.